ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಈಶೈಲೇಶ we continue with the nikshupadi <coughs> this the thirty second sutra ide a ennum u ennum ma ennum moonu teru aksharam moonru taalile daire nirakte ಅಕಾರಂ ಸಕಲ ಶಬ್ದಕ್ಕೂ ಕಾರಣಮಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಂಗ್ರಹಮಾಯ ರಿಕ್ಕಯಾಲೆ ಸಕಲ ಜಗತ್ತಕ್ಕು ಕಾರಣಮಾಯ ಸರ್ವರಕ್ಷಕನಾನ ಎಂಬೆರುಮಾನ ಚೊಲ್ಲು ಹಿರದಿ so these are the <coughs> five sutras we are going to study today ide a ennum u ennum ma ennum moonru teru aksharam moonru taalile taire nirette kadaindu venne tirattina pole moonru vedathilum moon nakshatrayum eduthathu So the meaning is as follows as we all know the ashtakshara maha mantra consists of three main components in the form of three words that is <coughs> om is the first word <coughs> second word is namaha and the third word is narayanaya so among these three the first word is om it is also known as pranava as far as the <coughs> upanishadic literature is concerned this word has a huge 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 significance because <coughs> in the upanishads we find several statements sarve vedaya padama mananti tapagam si sarvani ca yad vadanti ಯದಿಚ್ಛಂತೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚರ್ಯಂ ಚರಂತಿ ತತ್ತೇ ಪದಂ ಸಂಗ್ರಹೇಣ ಬ್ರವೀಮ್ಯೋ ವಿತ್ಯೇತತ್ ದಿ ಕಠೋಪನಿಷತ್ ವಿ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಮಂತ್ರಸ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಣಯ ಸರ್ವೇ ವೇದಾಹ ಯತ್ ಪದಂ ಆಮನಂತಿ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ <coughs> propound this padam this word it is a syllable can be called as a syllable <coughs> in the sense it is one alphabet put together of a combination of three alphabets in that sense we call it as varna then <coughs> it can be considered as a pada also because it can it actually conveys some specific meaning 
and thirdly <coughs> it also is identical with the supreme lord himself so when we <coughs> study the yoga sutra it says specifically klesha karma vipakashayihi aparamrishta purusha visheshah ishwarah tasya vachakas pranavah a very 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 important aspect that is mentioned in the yoga sutra <coughs> earlier that is before the sutra tasya vachakas pranavah the yoga sutra defines what ishwara is of course technically speaking <coughs> vishishta advaita philosophy does not accept this definition as i mentioned technically speaking has to be under the underlined but of course all the concepts mentioned there are acceptable to us also because it says klesha karma vipaka aashayi aparamrishta and then klesha is defined karma is defined aashaya is defined vipaka is defined all those things are defined but we also accept all these things in the sense that he is not under the control of karma but the karma of all the human all the atmans all the souls are under his control so we call him as karma adhyakshah the upanishad say karma adhyakshah sarva loka adhivasah sakhi cheta kevalah nirgunashta ara nirgunashta <clears throat> but we define ishwara in a different manner we define the supreme lord in a different manner but after defining what ishwara is it says tasya vachakah pranavah the word that denotes ishwara is the pranava <clears throat> so in yoga shastra also this has a huge 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 connotation in vyakarana shastra also it is well defined in vedanta shastra vedanta means upanishads so they also like i said in the kathopanishad it says sarve vedaha yat padam mamananti so it is not only a word it is also the it denotes a particular state of existence it is also known by the word padam padyate gamyate iti padam sthanam so we can we say vaikuntha padam vaikuntha padam means not the word vaikuntha it can also mean the word vaikuntha but the location vaikuntha also is actually denoted by the word pada so pada means location pada means word pada means feet <laughs> several meanings are there for you so here what it says is there are three this word the first word is <coughs> the pranava and the pranava consists of three letters it is a ennum u ennum ma ennum moonru tiruvakshara and it says moonru taalile thaire nirittu venne tirattuma pole so this is the sara or is the purport of the three vedas namely rigveda sama there might be a question here why atharvana veda is not included some people say that atharvana veda is not a veda at all because <coughs> people who are not in the know of things they will say that atharvana veda deals with sorceries and black magic so it is not considered as a veda by some which is totally incorrect and those who hold this view they actually quote the name of the vedas as iti vedas trayas trayi trayaha and trayi trayi means a com- combination of three or what we call as triad t r a i d in english so iti vedaha trayaha trayi since it is specifically mentioned that the combination of three there is no question of atharvana veda it has to be discounted not many people have given the answer to this question 
why why it has been mentioned here like that. on the other hand angani vedas chatvaraha in manusmriti and also in several other places in the agnya for example in the apastamba dharma sutra it says chatvaro varnaha vin chatvaro vedaha rigya jussa mathirvana akya vedas chatvaraha etc so it is a very famous statement or it's a very famous fact that there are for the four vedas rigya jussa ma and atharvana but here why are they referring to only three the answer is from the point of view of chandas chandas or meters are divided into three that is rik chandas edu edus chandas and sama chandas so when the chandas is taken into consideration there are three types of chanda chandagamsi or chandamsi from that point of view you call it as trai or traya that doesn't mean that atharvana veda does not exist when you divide it from the point of view of chandas there are three types of principal chandas rik chandas sama chandas and atharvana edus chandas from that point of view we have three veda three main branches but how many vedas are there in number it is four only that is rik edus sama and atharva and in atharva some portions deal with sorceries and black magic that doesn't mean that the entire vatharvana veda is dedicated to that only many a times what happens when they ask questions or when they frame questions in quizzes they ask which is the veda that deals with uh, some black magic and sorcery people will say atharvana ah, yes 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 correct because nobody has studied what atharvana veda is or even if they have studied some text they will not know what it contains that is the problem as far as vedas are concerned whether that is correct or not is another question which we will not deal with so here he says moon rutali ne taire nirette venne direttu ma pole that means just as you have very good the cream of the curds filled to the brim in three different vessels so in those days you did not have these sharp cuts to extract uh, the fat or to extract the butter from the curds so today so today nowadays there are machines which directly extract the um, butter from the milk itself so many procedures modern procedures have been found out but that fat or the milk fat or the butter that is extracted in that way is much inferior to the traditional way in which it is extracted so first the milk has to be boiled the curds have to, the cream of the milk has to be extracted then you have to actually <clears throat> convert it into curds by a process called atamchana as it is called in sanskrit and in that curd also you have to take the creamy layer which forms on the top of the curd and then you have to churn it after churning that is also in the traditional way you actually have a churning stick like uh, churning stick and in the bottom where there will be a wooden structure wooden specific type of a specifically shaped wooden structure with that you have to actually churn it like this and then extract the butter that is the correct process of extracting the butter which will have all the medicinal qualities so extracting uh, butter directly from the milk is not advised since the medical medicinal qualities will be lost that is not the <laughs> the what <clears throat> is a topic that is pertinent now but he says moon rutali ne taire nirattu venne tirattu ma pole மூன்று தாளினே தயிரை நிறைத்து கடைந்து வெண்ணெய் திரட்டினார் போதே மூன்று வேதத்திலும் மூன்று அக்ஷரத்தை எடுத்து மூன்று அக்ஷரத்தையும் எடுத்தது சோ வென் யூ ஹாவ் தி பர்பட் தட் இஸ் இன் தி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் திஸ் 
single alphabet from each Veda that is picked, Ajus and Saba. <coughs> so you, you have Akara from Rig Veda, Ukara from Major Veda, and Makara from Saba Veda. So that is the purport of all the three Vedas. One one alphabet has been extracted, which actually represents the entire Veda. And therefore, he says in the 34th Sutra, Ahaya Ridhi Sakala Veda Saram. The Pranava is the purport of all the Vedas. So, Swami Manavad Mamani comments upon this in a very nice manner. He says, Ini Pranavatrik Artha Marulichai Vedaha, Ini Nudia Akshara Triat Makate, Arulichai Hira. So yet, unless a person is well versed in Sanskrit, Yakarana or Sanskrit grammar, you will not be able to understand what the Sutra says. Today there are several commentators in India, several people who give discourses. <clears throat> Though they know Tamil, they are totally uh, ignorant about Sanskrit language. Even many a times I hear to several lectures on YouTube and other uh, media. They are unable to pronounce the Sanskrit words properly. So such people, if they give lectures, it will not be complete. That much we have to understand while we study these texts. So he says, Swami Manavada Mamani says, Pranavantan asam hita karattale moon raksharamai moon rupadamai moon ratta prakashakamai asam hita kara means what? Samhita means Sandhi. It is said as Paras Sandhikarsha Samhita. Panini defines Samhita as Paraha Sandhikarsha. Very, very, very close proximity or joining together of two Varnas or alphabets. Alphabet might not be the correct translation. Two Varnas or two Aksharas. We can keep it as like that. So suppose A and D come together. It becomes a Gana plus Ishaha, Ganeshaha. If the word in when two words, Gana and Isha come together, then <coughs> the last alphabet or last Varna, as it is called, in the word Gana is Akara. So Gana is split into Gakara, Akara, Nakara, and Akara. And Isha is split into three Ikara, Shakara, and Nakara. So the last letter of the first word and first letter of the <coughs> second word, they join together. So A and E join together and it becomes Ganesha. This is known as Sandhi in Sanskrit. It is also known as Samhita in Vyakarana parlance because Samhita is a word that is used in several contexts in several different meanings. But in this context, the word Samhita means Sandhi, or closest proximity of two alphabets or two Bhavarnas. So when you join A and O, it becomes O. And O and M becomes O. But there, there is no Sandhi, then it is just close proximity. Because there is no difference in B, there is no transformation of two alphabets into one alphabet. There also a huge amount of Vyakarana issues are involved, which is not relevant now. So this is Vriddhiradai Chadeng Guna. A I Au is known as Vriddhiradai A I Adai. So it is Ayune, Rilik, Avong, Ayauch. Avong, A and O are known as. <coughs> Gunavaranas, Aden Gunaha. I and O are known as Vridhi, Vridhi Varanas. 
So Akara, Ekara, and Okara are known as Guna, Guna Varmas. These three are called as Guna. Whereas Akara, Okara, and Aukara are known as Vriddhi Varmas in Sanskrit. So here we have Guna Sandhi, Akara and Okara join together to become Okara. And then you have, you add Makara to this, it becomes Om. So Asamhita Karattare Moon Raksharama. When the Sandhi is split, you have A, U, and Ma. And these three are in the form of three words. What is the definition of a word? The definition of a word is that which conveys some sensible meaning. <coughs> Therefore, Swami Manavada Mama says, Moon Raksharamai, Moon Rupadamai, Moon Ratha Prakashakamai. <coughs> Those, though these three <coughs> are individual alphabets or letters, they three are words in themselves. Not only are they individual alphabets, they are also individual words. And what is the definition of a word? Shaktam Padam is the definition of a word given in Nyaya Shastra, which is applicable in this context, which means that which has a cap the capacity to denote something is known as word. Therefore, moon, rathap, prakash, kamai, when you consider the pranava as a combination of three alphabets, it has three alphabets, which are in the form of three words, conveying three individual meanings. This is on one side. On the other side, what, what, does, what does it happen? Samhita karattale ekaksharamai ekapadamai ekartha prakashakamai ire iripadi. So when you take the samhita kara, or when you take the om as one syllable, which is the combination of a, u, and ma, that is, you take the Siddha Sandhi form as we call it. So when we do Sandhi Vicheda, it is A, U and Ma. But when you do the Sandhi, it is Siddha Sandhi or something like that, then it is Eka Aksharama, it is only one syllable. Therefore it is one word and therefore it conveys one meaning. So both these interpretations are viable, they are valid. That's what he says in the 30 seconds. Then he says, how, how did these three syllables come into existence? In, <coughs> in the Akshara Tret, the Nudea, Udeo, Utpati, Kramatta, Sadrishtan, Tamaha, Rudicha, Hira. How did these three, these three words come to be? the representatives of the three Vedas. So why Akara only for Bhavan Veda? Why Ukara only? Why not Ikara? Why not some other Ekara, Raukara, Rikara or something like that? Why only Aau and Ma? Does it have any specific reason behind that? This question is answered. Bhūriti Rigveda Rajayata Bhuvaiti Yajuru Veda Swariti Sama Veda Tani Shukran Yabhya Abhya Tapati Tebhyahat Tebhyopi Tebhyahat Trayovarna Adayanta Makara Ukara Makara Iti Tani Katha Sama Bharata Deta Domiti So Bhuhu Bhuaha Suaha these are the three, what is known as Vyahrati in Veda, in the Vedas. Everywhere we say Bhurbhoswaha, Bhurbhoswaha, Bhurbhoswaha. <laughs> Even in the Gayatri, Bhurbhoswaha is there. And in the <coughs> Pranayama Mantra, it has seven, not only three. Seven is an extension of these three, according to people who know Yoga Shastra. And <coughs> these Bhuri, Tiva, Ayam, Loka, in the Taitri Upanishad, these Bhu, 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 and Soha are interpreted in several, several manners. 
भूरी वर्च भुवैति सामानी सुवरी यजोगंशी भूरी वै प्राण भुवैत्यपान सुवरी व्यान लाइक दट शिक्षा वाली ह्यूज इंटरप्रिटेशन इज गिवन ऑफ दि थ्री व्यारती दि कनोटेशन आफ दी Three Vyaharthis itself can be the topic of a of a wonderful PhD thesis because these are involved in Yoga Shastra, Vyakarana Shastra, in Vedanta, in Vedic uh, literature, entire Vedic literature, which is standing on these three. Then these are applied in Sandhya and then Gayatri Mantra it is there. Huge connotation these three. Have. So, Bhūriti Rigveda Vajayata, Bhūriti Varcha, Bhūvaiti, Samani, Suvariti Yajogam Sheet is there, mentioned there. But here it says, Bhū Bhūvaiti Yajuru Veda, Suvariti Sama Veda, Tani Shukranya Abhyata 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 Pati, Tebhyo Pitap Tebhya, Trayo Varna Ajayanta. So, some process occurred where there was a huge churning and also some burning etc how we had to understand this is very mysterious we cannot it's very difficult to understand even i don't know really what this actually means but ultimately what it mentions is the purport or sara of the three vedas were given as akara ukara and makara Tebhyopi taptebhya treyo varna, they were when they were heated. And <clears throat> so generally what happens when you heat, for example, the butter, you get the ghee. Similarly, that is the, what happens according to science, or what little I know of science is, the water content is removed and you get pure ghee. And the water content actually is, uh, it remains in the bottom in the form of black particles, which is then discarded. So, te bhyo pitap te bhyaha trayo varna ha jayanta akaraha ukaraha makaraha iti ta nekatha samabharate tadeta no viti. Then the Supreme Lord actually joined them together, which actually became the omkara. So this is one, <coughs> one pramana. Second pramana is in room akarancha pyukarancha makarancha prajapatihi vedatrayan nirabrihati bhur bhuvasvarati svariti ticha. So prajapati means Chaturmukha Brahma. He actually extracted these three alphabets or letters from the three Vedas and then join them together, which became Om. In Rum Shruti Svarti Tihadil Shundu Hirapadiye Rigya Jussa Marupamana Veda Prayatil In Rum Puhu Puhaha Suhaha Indira Vyarati Prayatayam Tohottu Vitti Andha Vyarati Prayatayam Ponnu Ponnu Davai Kuma Pone Pondru Odaway Kuma Pode, then Sankal Patare Odawaiti Avatil Nindrum Makara Ukara Makarangala Hirakshirangal Moonrum Adaivadun Adaiveto Undrum Padi Pandi Ipadi Sarveshwaran Samudharita Padiat Rulam Pati Patra Trayagatamana Tayre Tanitani Kadinde that Saraman and me, one be direct in a poor day. Mundruve the Tilum, moon lecture at the Yumedicta de Girard. So, very beautifully, he summarizes. He says, <coughs> The three Vyartis are Bhuhu, Puaha, Suaha, referring to the three Vedas. These are known as Vyartis. What Vyarti means, etc., it's a very big topic which is closely associated with Yoga Shastra. And how they are associated with the human body 
how they are associated with the human soul or the individual soul etc are very big topics which are very important but they may not be very relevant in this context so i am not going to that from that point of view and also my knowledge also in that regard is very limited but <clears throat> these three are the three vyaharthis <clears throat> that represent the three vedas that are extracted from the three vedas just as these three vyaharthis are extracted three alphabets or letters also have been extracted which are a u and ma <clears throat> and the example or analogy given is actually individually churning the curds in three different vessels and then after you get the uh, butter then you join it so many a times what happens <clears throat> the question might arise why not put everything in one vessel and then churn it and take and get the butter no <clears throat> the method of having three vessels and getting the butter from three vessels and then joining it is quite different from doing it in one vessel so the taste will differ the <clears throat> so for example many a times <laughs> the same person suppose i prepare rice unless you do it in a very very systematic manner like you measure the water that you have used for rice to the milli milli liter level or even thing and the same rice you keep but if you say do the same process also <clears throat> when you when the same person prepares rice in an identical fashion also the taste will be slightly slightly different between them because the amount of temperature given amount of water that is used then the how much time the rice has taken to <clears throat> get cooked etc so there will be definitely difference between two rices that are prepared at the same time by the same person using using the same ingredients similarly in this context also three vessels are there and in all the three vessels pure um, curds are put they are churned then the butter is extracted and then they is joined so that taste cannot be achieved when it is done in a single vessel in a single process therefore patra traya gatamana tairai tanitaniye kadinde says how beautifully he has explained it can see patra traya gatamana tairai tanitaniye kadinde so you have three separate vessels they are separately churned and the butter is separately ex- extracted and then it is joined together tatsaramana vende vaangi tirattina pole so that extract is taken and then it is joined together then that produce is vilakshana it is very different from if it is done in a single vessel so then what is the result of it ittal phalitattai arudichai hira so the <coughs> result of doing so is ahayal idu sakala veda saram adavadi akshara premam oro veda tinude saramaha samriddhama samriddhatama samriddhatama haya samudhritama hayale iv akshara triyatmaka mana pranavam sakala veda saram indra padi so the curds are having different properties for example one curd might be extract uh, might be prepared using the milk of one type of indian cow so <clears throat> you have 40 different indigenous cow breeds in india and <clears throat> according to ayurveda the <clears throat> medicinal properties of each of the milks of the different breeds of cows are different similarly in a book called bhojana kutuhalam that has been published with our participation in the in the process of publication 
the ayurveda shastra mentions how the different medicinal properties are realized when milk is heated in a earthen vessel when milk is heated in a silver vessel copper vessel then uh, gold vessel etc of course it should never be <coughs> boiled in an iron vessel because iron has totally opposite properties than milk so <coughs> you can use <coughs> stainless steel but milk should never come into contact with iron unless some other ingredients are added to overcome the disadvantages so <coughs> you can see how the properties of milk differ same milk when it is boiled in different vessels different types of vessels and also from the same cow when it is extracted in different times of the day etc so the curds are <coughs> of different natures similarly the vedas also are of different natures rigveda is different from ayurveda ayurveda is different from samaveda and <coughs> you have lot of differences between so i will not go into that because that is another huge huge topic because what is the difference between that what is the difference between that from the point of view of vedas <coughs> after it was divided into four by vedavyasa what happens is the you have four people who are involved in the yagnas that is hota udgata advaryu and brahma so the hota belongs to the rigveda udgata belongs to samaveda and advaryu belongs to the yajushaka or that particular branch so these three vedas are specifically applied to three different roles in the yagnas from that point of view so that's another huge huge topic <coughs> which even i know very little about and also <coughs> which is not totally relevant now so you have three separate vessels in the form of three vedas and the sara are the <coughs> most important uh, purport of those is extracted in the three vedas uh, in the three in the form of three alphabets that is a in rum o in rum ma in rum <coughs> aha ide இதில் சொல்லுகிற வர்த்தம் என்று தொடங்கி இவ்வளவும் இம்மந்திரத்தினுடைய வாக்கியார்த்தத்தையும் அக்ஷர சங்கையும் பத சங்கையும் பதத்திரயமும் அர்த்தத்திரய பிரதிபாதகம் என்னும் அதையும் அதில் பிரதம பதம் என்னும் பிரதம பதம் இன்னது என்னும் இன்னும் என்னுமத்தையும் அதுதான் அக்ஷரத்திரயாத்மகமா இருக்கும் என்னுமத்தையும் அவ்வக்ஷரத்திரேமம் வேதசா வேதத்திரே சாரம் ஆக உற்பன்னமாகியாலே தத் சமுதாயமான பிரணவம் சகல வேத சாரம் என்னும் அத்தையும் அருளி செய்தாராய்த்து சோ தி பர்பட் ஆஃப் தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அர்லி தி ப்ரீவியஸ் ஃபோர் சூத்ரஸ் ஆர் எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ட் இன் தி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் எ புலெட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் இயர் வெரி பியூட்டிஃபுல்லி பை சுவாமி மனவாள மாமி so he says which are the aspects covered <coughs> in the previous four sutras he says in mantratnude vakyarthatayum the overall meaning of the mantra then akshara sankhya the number of alphabets pada sankhya the number of words pada trayum artha tray pratipadakamaha aham pratipadakam ennumattayum the three words convey three different meanings adil prathama padam irennam ennumattayum it is the first word among the three words that first word is once again having three alphabets which are in the form of three words convey three meanings and these three alphabets are the purport of the three vedas and therefore <coughs> the pranava which is the combination of all these three alphabets is the sakala veda saram it is the sara or the extracted purport of all the three vedas or all the vedas 
So these are the aspects that have been covered in the previous four sutras. <coughs> now he comes to the what akara exactly means. It is akaram sakala shabdatkum karanamai narayana padatk sangramai rikkayade sakala jagatkum karanamai sarvarakshakanane imbirumani chuluhiradi. So akara is the the root or the cause of all words in this universe or all words that can be heard in this universe. So <clears throat> this sutra we will, uh, we will actually examine the next class. So any questions are there or any discussions we can have. Swami, um, concerning Omkara, Pranava, uh, you, you were saying that uh, Akara and Ukara together, uh, Guna Sandhi, become O. Oh. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm just wondering why, why O Kara is, a, is also uh, a Varna. O Kara is also a Varna in, in, the, in the alphabet. Yes. yes. So somebody can somebody will say why not why not you just say uh o, o and m is two two letters no <clears throat> actually what happens when you have the makara also no makara also joins actually to that so it cannot be two it can be only one from that point of view so it's not o and m or Makara, O, O Kara and Makara, it's not like that. That is why specifically they have said it is O. Samhita Kara Tare, Eka Pada, Eka, Eka Aksharamai. So it cannot be two, but the, the joy and the Sandhi that occurs between A and O is different than the Sandhi that occurs. There is no Sandhi, but actually there is very close proximity to O Kara and Makara. So right. it is considered as one word. Okay. One alphabet. Okay. So why, now, why it is like that? Why it is like that? Why I and O should, should become O? For that scientific reason is there. So Akara, how it happens uh, that uh, for that my father had done some research with regard to is using sound forge and other things. So even when you have the wave form of Akara and wave form of Ukara and you join these two waves automatically it becomes O. This uh, experiment nobody had done earlier, but he, he did a lot of work with regard to speech recognition and speech synthesis, etc. There, it, uh, to our uh, surprise, we found, suppose you add A and A, it becomes A. So it's not uh, concerning our speech box, etc. Even the waveforms, which is like this, when you add them also, it becomes like that. Only. But there is... In some places, there is the issue of prosody. Sometimes there is a small uh, or there is not enough gap. That is a different issue which needs to be uh, uh, the, which needs to be debated. We have found out why it happens like that when you join <coughs> there and why you it doesn't happen when you actually pronounce it. Once again, that is another very very huge topic. But ultimately, what happens once my guru pointed out. When you open your mouth, this Omkara has uh, hundreds of things to be mentioned. Suppose I say, ah. When you open your mouth, there also you have two types of Akaras according to Vyakarana Shastra. Uh, uh is there, ah uh is there. So we call it as Samrita Akara and Vivrita Akara. So when your mouth is partially open, uh, uh, there are two different akaras. That is why the last sutra of Pani is a. Uh, that's how we have to pronounce it. Is it is it uh, raswa? Is it raswa and dirga or is it? No, 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 no. Both of them are raswa. Ah. But one is samrta akara and another is vivrta akara. Hmm. So, in those who are very familiar with Kannada language, they can easily understand. Atte means aunt. Atte means I cried. 
So, a uh and a, uh, they are very, very prominent, prominently different actually. Anyway, coming to the point of ah, uh, if you say ah, uh, then when you gradually close your mouth, ah, uh, so your mouth is open like this, ah, uh, then gradually when you close this, ah, uh, so when your uh, uh, lips, they start closing and the nada continues. What is nada? The sound continues. Uh, let's see how natural the process it is. <laughs> My guru very beautifully explained it to me once. So the nada continues when you have, when you start uh, So it is a natural progression when your mouth is open like this, ah uh, starts, then as you gradually close the lips, it becomes U, and then when you close it, markups. So it is one, so my father actually gives a lot of explanations, gives many interpretations, how the, uh, the sounds that start from the, uh, throat, which are known as the gutturals, gutturals, parietals, lingials, labials, and then you have the, whatever is for the oshtavarnas, they are called as oshtavarnas. So this can be explained in great length according to science also, how the sound box functions, etc. So OM is one, that way it is, it can be one only, it cannot be many, it cannot be O and B separate. Okay. So uh, also, there are some people, according to, there are some people who say that uh, mm, ladies and uh, non trivarnikas they have to say only um, um. Yeah, that not, is a different not, question. Uh, that is, once again, if it is, uh, I have already explained that the pranava, if it is chanted in a particular manner, see, in the, in according to Yoga Shastra, pranava, though we say it, uh, om, etc. The pranava has a very, very huge connotation. That's why I said hundreds of millions, hundreds of books can be written. And the pranava is of 101 lakh or 125,000 types, according to Yoga Shastra. That means after, if you progress in the path of yoga, which you are all totally alien to now, if you progress in the path of yoga, then he realizes the pranava. That it is a very huge topic. I, I don't want to go into that now, right now. Okay. So let us, for the for that matter, I'll just conclude by saying that there are some bodily functions may get affected if the pranava is chanted in the right manner by them, which will actually affect their uh, family life, etc. I would like to put it in that way. So, so also, but also sudras. Yes, yes, yes. They, they, they are, as I said, their body will not be able to withstand the uh, power that is generated by that. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, my father gives the, puts it in a very succinct manner by says the system will not accept. It. <laughs> okay. Of course, people all over the world. People all over the world nowadays are chanting Omkar, so that's one thing. But if it is done that way, but generally it does not happen. So we, we yeah, that's okay. Not they are safe. Don't worry. God will take care. I'm understanding. Okay, but 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 uh, in Tenacharya Sampradaya, ladies and sudras are also getting Astakshara mantra yes, with Omkar. Yes, with, with the pranava only they are getting. But as I mentioned. Ladies, when they are given, they are actually, after they have children and all those things only, generally it is given to them. Of course, Shudras, see, one very important thing is, it will create, it may create that effect when it is chanted very seriously for a very, very long time. It's not like I chanted for 10 times or 15 times, 100 times, 108 times and be done with it. Then as of now, our... Uh, the, our layers of karma are so uh, strong that people like me, I am telling, I don't know about you because I am not competent to comment about others. 
our layer of karma is so uh, strong that we had to chant it for several thousands or millions of times for it to have some effect. That doesn't mean chanting it for 10 times or 15 times doesn't have any effect. It has at its level. <laughs> See, <clears throat> that's why I give the example of sports. Suppose you have to win Wimbledon. You have to practice for a, a 10 hours a day. I want to play for 5 minutes. Then it is enough if I uh, practice for 2 minutes of uh, uh, three once in a week I do it itself. So if you want to attain Siddhi Aishwarya Kaivanya Bhagavad Labangali Ashik Pattavarikki Avatta Italekati Kurukum etc. That has to become your life. <laughs> you should not do anything else other than doing that only. It has to become what you call a vocation or it has to become a profession or something like that. Today Today, spiritual pursuits are given the last, last, last preference as far as I know, or even as far as I am concerned, though I may be giving some talk on this. But I have realized that it is not so easy. And uh, even <clears throat> I have a lot of interaction with people who learn music. So if they are to <clears throat> give a, a concert performance in a concert, how much time they devote? If it's a Veena artist or a violin artist, he has to practice for eight hours a day or ten hours a day. That is a tapas. Yeah. Even Ashtakira is not like this. It's not like, of course, to tell about its greatness, we may say, uh, he said Narayana, he went to Moksha and all those things. <laughs> that is only to tell about the greatness. But in reality, it has to become a penance. Then only it will have some effect. Okay, so all of this discussion is about the uh, physical vibration of the of the letters by saying it out loud, but uh, Omkara can also the Pranava can also be uh, meditated upon. Oh, which... that is that is that is the ultimate. That is how it has to be really done. Physical pronunciation is only the first level. Right. Okay. Ultimately, ultimately, you have to concentrate on the mantra itself. Right. I, because so I mantra, have, mantra I have more some. It is mentioned as mantra murtaya devata. Right. The sound, the sound form of Lord Narayana is the Ashtakira Maha Mantra. Right. So ultimately, you have to concentrate deeply, deeply, deeply on the mantra itself. Then, right. then that has a huge uh, effect. And and concern, concerning Sunday in Narayana Upanishad, we have Madhusudanam Parabrahmam. Is this seems to be a different type of Sunday when if uh, if the, are there some rules for 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 Om, special rules for Om and Sunday? Madhusudana, no, Madhusudana no, and Om would become no, Madhusudana Om. Yes. There, there, it's in a different uh, context, in a different uh, uh, for a different purpose. Here, it is separately only mentioned Om Namaha, so there is no Sunday uh, between the two words actually. No, but, there in Brahmanyo Devaki Putra, Brahmanyo Madhusudano, there we have to see why it has been mentioned like that. Good that you pointed out. I'll find out or I'll see okay, I'll okay. about why it has been mentioned like that. Uh, also, you were speaking about uh, the Vyahritis at Burbhava Suvaha, but in Krishna Javeda, people say Suvaha. In North India, in Sukli Javeda, they say Sva and not Suvaha. Is there a difference between Sva and Suvaha? Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> even in uh, <coughs> even in Krishna Yajurveda Aranyaka, many places Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha comes. That I'll find out and let you know. It's okay. a very good observation. But both are there. Even in Yajurveda, Krishna Yajurveda itself, you have Swaha and Suvaha. I'll I'll find out and I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, Right. As far as Vedas are and, the, and then uh, you were mentioning how Vedavyasa uh, separated the Vedas into four. And originally, uh, I have heard that is what was called e Ekayana Shaka. Originally, it was uh, called Ekayana Shaka? No, no, no. Ekayana Shaka is referred to. Pancharatra. Pancharatras are called Ekayanas. Pancharatra. Yeah. Ekayana Shaka generally refers to Pancharatra, not uh, this thing. But the but the Veda originally the Veda was one. That's what that's what we understand as of now, <clears throat> because um, 
he actually it is a vedam yasyate iti vyasa that is why he came to be known as vedam vyasa but uh, we don't have um, very but in the vedas itself you have sama vedo brahm rigyo da tam vaishyam varnavahu ejur vedam kshatriyasya hulyo nimu sama vedo brahm hana nam prasuti vihadi rajasama niyajogam shi sahishri ramrupa sapa etc so afterwards also some vedic passages might have come into existence these are all very very deep topics because some traditional scholars they don't accept this but my guru used to tell me that even now some vedic passages can come into existence so it's a continuous process many many shakhas get uh, become extinct and in future many more shakhas may be added also because in india there is never a dearth of rishis coming into existence again uh, ananta bhai ananta bhai veda yes ananta bhai veda yeah so in future also several rishis are going to come who are once again going to revitalize the vedas in a different manner so it's not like after veda vyasa did this several passages could not have come into existence definitely they could have come into existence but there is no clarity on these issues because only a gyani as we call him a gyani who has divine knowledge who can decipher all the information that is available in nature and divinity only he can tell about these things and even my guru could tell about these things because he was guided by such a person so so you 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 mentioned taitiri upanishad says uh uh yajush yajushiti uh suva iti yajugumsi yeah suva iti yajugumsi yes iti brahma and sukha yeah but is like that so they their their yajus the yajus is said to be suvaha but in yes. other places it, it is said rig rig yajus and sama there it is said rig sama and yajus is there some reason that also i had to find out okay yeah actually the mantra flashed to me only when i was uh, actually talking to you now so even i had to find out uh, even when i was uh, reading that earlier today it did not flash to me but only when i was uh, talking to you in the course of this class i could uh, it flashed to me so it's a very good question that also i had not done and i ask the competent person to so i have so what is the answer one more one more quick vyakarna question uh omkara is usually is usually uh written as a okara and an anushwara because and and we know this the 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 the, the m sandhi the sandhi is when the makara is followed by is followed by a consonant then it turns into anushwara yeah, yeah? but yeah. if so if but if we say om achutaya namaha when it is followed by a uh, by a by a swara by a, by a by a vowel uh, right is it written as a as a anushwara or not written as an anushwara a good question very good question so it is both ways are acceptable according to vyakarana shastra <laughs> even i was under the impression until recently i had a long discussion with one person so as far as we are taught in the beginning if it is followed by a swara akshara or a vowel it has to be written as b on but some people some people write it as a swara also but from what i found from a vyakarana expert it can be written both things so we see we see in devanagari sometimes they they have a a symbol for omkara a special symbol yes. Yes. that's yes. that symbol includes a chandra bindu yes but is there is a difference between chandra bindu and anushwara some people yes. say yes. anunasika and anushwara yes yes so in in omkara is it chandra bindu or is it a, 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 is it anunasika or anushwara once again, once again once again there are so many types of omkaras <laughs> so for example this is another big it's all a huge uh, thing <laughs> uh, difficult to discuss even uh, when we are discussing i am 
more and more uh, becoming aware of my own ignorance. Because in the uh, Mandokya Upanishad, the question is, he talks about Yekamatra Kalika Pranava, Dvimatra Kalika Pranava, Trimatra Kalika Pranava, and Sardha Trimatra Kalika Pranava. So he talks about Pranava that is of one matra. But when you say, oh, it is a Dirghaswara, so it cannot be of one matra. How can it be of one matra if it is having two swaras? A and O become O, it becomes Dirga. And Dirga always is of two matras. But here we are telling Sardha three matra. So Makara, if you take as one matra, it should be three, but you are telling Sardha three matra. So that is easily resolvable because that Ardha matra Kala is the Nada. That is, um, when you say like that, that Nada is supposed to be, supposed to be, once again, <laughs> there are also <laughs> several issues are there. So, so, of so course. Two matras is acceptable. Three matras are acceptable. Sardha three matra also acceptable. Two matras is also not acceptable because you say Om. It is actually minimum three matras have to be there. Well, two, two and a half. Uh, Vyanjana Aramatrakam, no? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do you say one ekamatra kadika pranava? But he says, what is the what is the fruits? What are the fruits or results that are uh, uh, attained by a person who uh, worships the ekamatra kadika pranava? Uh, and then what are the results that a person yeah. attains when he does dvimatra, then trimatra, and sardha? I see. So, but in the Upanishads also it mentions the difference between Nada and Bindu, no? That is once again another Nada, Bindu and Kala. That is, that is how, what happens even in the next Sutra it is going to come. So what is Nada, what is Bindu and what is Kala? That is another huge topic which is beyond our comprehension because only the persons who have the uh, acquaintance with Yoga Shastra can comment on that. So Nada, Bindu and Kala are three aspects that are closely associated with Yoga Shastra and how the Pranava comes into existence, etc. So more and more we discuss, more and more I am becoming aware of my ignorance and also the vastness of the topic. Anyway, thanks for actually uh, uh, raising these questions, which I will also clarify. Two questions I have to clarify immediately is, one is uh, that uh, in the Itri Upanishad it says that is one question. And which is the other question? <laughs> some, some other questions are uh, about, about, uh, about um, Makara and Anushwara with, with a, with joined with a swara with a, with a vowel or not, whether, how it is written. And uh, and also, I mean, even I'm thinking of more questions about whether the wh wh whether there can whether yeah, well, there can... Is a, another question is which is correct, both both swaha or both both swaha, because both of them are there. Right. So, what is the difference between them? Yes. Yeah. And 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 yeah. also, I'm even thinking about uh, can there be different swaram in the in the in the okara? That also we have to find out whether it is Adyulata, Antolata, etc. That also I will find out. Yeah. But I think the Upanishads, like you said, uh, uh, Mundaka? Mandukya. Mandukya. Mandukya Upanishad is, uh, is, is giving more about this. About no, Mandukya, it actually, it says Akara is, it uh, equates these four, uh, four, that is Akara, Ukara, Makara, and uh, uh, Nada. That is the Pranavashiras, as they call it. It is also called as the Pranavashiras, I suppose. So, Akara is the Jagradavastha, Ukara is the Svapnavastha, and uh, Makara is Sushuptavastha, and the Pranavashiras, the Nada, is Turiyavastha. That is the waking state, so dream state, uh, deep sleep state, and then the fourth state, this is known as Samadhi state. So, these four are equated with those four. So, uh, Jagrana, oh, Swapnas, uh, Susupti, and Turiya. Yes, 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 yes. That is why I said, 
is Omkara is once again, there is one more uh, saying, Omkarascha Atashaptascha Dvaveto Brahmanaspura Kantram Bhitva Vidriyato Tasman Mangalika Ubhav. So, the Omkara and uh, Atashabda, that is another huge, huge <laughs> Why, why Atha, why not any other word? But anyway, these two words pierce the uh, throat of Brahma, Brahman or Brahma, and then they came out or they emanated from the mouth of Brahman, and therefore they are extremely pious. That's what this shloka says. That also, that significance also we have to understand. So, anyway, good uh, brainstorming. I think I would like to call it like that. I but, think uh, uh, I think if if you want to see all the issues again, you can watch the uh, the recording. Yeah, no, these two. Now I have. Uh, I will remember. I have got these two uh, questions in mind. So that, that I will ask him. I'll let you know. Thank you. Ajayad Ramanujayad Kesha Chatura Chatura Kshari Kamavastham Prabhadyante Jantavo Hantamadrushah Unyam Bhoja Vikasaya Papatvan Takshayaja Srimaan Avirabhut Bhumo Ramanuja Divakaraha Unikrita Virinchari Nirankusha Vibhutayaha Ramanuja Padam Bhoja Samashrena Shalinaha